So at this point, we've got dead load, we've got live load, we've got earthquake. Now what we need to do is we need to assign the load combinations. Okay, so create load combinations. So let's just do our basic 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. And then we also put in some earthquake loads. It's 1.2 dead plus 1.0 live. Plus 1.0 earthquake. And the earthquake can go the other direction also. So we're going to do 1.2 dead plus 1.0 live minus 1.0 earthquake, which just puts the earthquake in the opposite direction. So let's do those. We want to define load, let's see, load combinations, load case. I think it's load combinations. Add new combo. OK. So combo one, we're going to start with dead. We're going to do 1.2 dead, add that. I also want 1.6 live, add that. So that's combo one. OK, let's do a new combo, combo two. Combo two is going to be 1.2 dead, add. One point oh live add and one point oh earthquake add. Okay? And then combo three is just gonna be like two, except it's gonna be one point two dead, one point zero live, add, and then we'll do negative earthquake just to make the earthquake forces turn around. And since this is such a symmetric problem, it really doesn't matter much. But if you have a 3D building, right, with torsion and stuff, it really does depend, or it really does matter which way the earthquake goes. OK, so we've got three combinations. So when it runs all the analyses, it'll calculate the force envelopes and everything for those combinations. And then we can see what the maxes are between those combinations and things like that. OK, so we've got those in. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -do. OK. So now that we have the load combinations in, right, we can run the analyses and we can look at our force demands, right, because the load combinations are what we need for our force demands. So I'm going to run. So run analyses and look at results. So I ran it and I can go through and look at all of my force demands. So show forces and stresses on frame elements. So I want to look at my combinations, right, because that's what the code requires that I look at. So I go to combo one, look at moment, go there. Right, so this is 1.2 dead, 1.6 live. So now I can go through and say, okay, I need to design this beam. So I can go through and say, okay, there, there is a way to actually click on it or something and have the beam pop up, but and then you'd go to combo two, and so on. Show forces and stresses, combo two. I hit the wrong thing. Display forces and stresses there. Combo two, moment there. OK, so that's one of them with the earthquake in one direction. right? And then you can do the one with the earthquake in the other direction. And you just have to go element by element and look for the maximums, right? When you really do this, right, when I've used this before for research stuff, I just, I, I make a spreadsheet with Visual Basic. And you look at, let's see, there's a way that you can get an output table of all the results for all the load combinations. And then you can go through and take the maxes and mins of all the load combinations together. And that's easier to do, to work with a table rather than going visually through and doing all this.